So, you know, the wait is finally over and the debut Follow Your Nightmares is out. So, like, first of all, what are your own feelings and thoughts on the album now that, uh, you know, the reviews are coming in and Imperiumi gave it eight out of ten, by the way? Um, You know what, man? It's like each of these songs has a deep emotional connection with me throughout the past several years, you know? And um, it's it's kind of like a bit of a weight off the shoulders just to finally, like, get an, get that out, get that aspect of you out there. And I kind of go into it with no real expectations, you know, if people enjoy it, that's great. But if they don't, like, that's okay too, you know? So it, honestly, it, it's great. I'm grateful to be talking about it, <laughs> for talking about it with you. So, and, you know, I'm excited just to have it out, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I read somewhere, um, it must have been the press release, that their music was, uh, what was it, a horror-inspired, drug-induced, sex-fueled rock metal anthems. So, uh, well, how would you describe uh, uh, your band and your music? Well, that was me sitting down for like five minutes to write that. So I don't know if I can beat that now. But, <laughs> I, you know, the, the, it's kind of like 11 singles, to be honest. And I would say each song kind of has a different vibe, a different energy, a different flair. Like some are more sexually driven, some are more like classic heavy metal driven, some are more like horror driven. So... I think every every single kind of has its own like emotional driver and tells its own story. It's hard to kind of put it into to describe the record as a whole, you know, in that sense. Um, overall, I would say um, I would it's not like stoner metal by any means, but it's definitely like has a different sound. That's for sure. And like the style of riffing is, is definitely different, you know, than than anything that I've ever kind of checked out. So I guess how I'd, I would classify it as um, just like hopefully original, heavy, energetic fucking music, man. That's what I would say. Yeah. Um, uh, is it true that the band basically just together last year? Yeah, like, I mean, it's a band and it's also a solo project. Um, like I write all the music and I do like I create all the music and, and all that, but the band, um, we perform the music, right? So I kind of view like the music creation and the music performance as like two separate things. So um, yeah, we've got like a more steady band now. I've got like some really great guys in the band that have like are really aligned with the vision and the music itself. I think maybe before I had some guys who were just kind of playing the songs, but they were like my songs and like whatever. But now the guys are like, we're kind of all on the same page, I guess. So in that sense, you know, it's really a band too, so. Okay, so, uh, well, how, first of all, was it to put the band together in a times like this? And, uh, well, then after that, put the debut album out. Oh, man, like it's been quite the ride, dude. Everything you could have ever imagined could go right and go wrong basically happened. I learned a lot throughout this process. I mean, hell, like everybody in this business, I'm a newbie to this business. But I mean, to to get the guys together, really, it was just like, I tried to make some some good music, you know? Like, I just was like, okay, I'm gonna make some good music and hopefully the guys will flock to it. Like, hopefully people will just hear it and resonate with it. And that's, I mean, you know, grateful for that, but that's basically what happens. Um, first real guy I got in was Joey Muha, who who's like a, you know, international professional drummer, fantastic guy. And it's interesting, like the higher you get up with these like top level musicians, like the less ego they have and like just the more rad of dude they are. You know what I mean? It's not the opposite. It's like, wow, you're amazing. And you're also like a super chill rad dude. So I always try to give Joey some respects for that. Cause he was like, the, he came on, um, he's like toured the world. He's played, you know, he's done a lot. So way more experienced than I am, but he heard the music and he just was like, I like it. And we got along, you know, and, he, and then he brought on a guy named Ryan Miller on bass, same sort of thing. These guys have, you know, tons of experience, really good dudes. And then um, Greg on guitar is a friend of mine that I've known for some time who's a really technically proficient guitar player. So that's where we're at right now. Um, definitely there could be, you know, some more people coming to the band or like some changes here and there, but that's where we're at right now. 
Yeah, you said that the uh, songs are, it's more like a collection of singles. So uh, did you write this music uh, in like a bigger time span or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, well, basically we wrote like the first four songs. In this, so like um, Stone and Alone, King of Sin, Isolated and Whiskey Devil Girl, we wrote all in kind of one shot. That was like me and Gavin Brown a, a number of years ago. And then there's another batch that kind of trickled in, which Gavin did a bit of, and then Mike Riley did a bit of, and then like the end batch was um, basically me and Mike Riley. So yeah, there's definitely been like a time span and a, and um, we kind of morphed it all together at the end. Okay, the, let's go to the videos then. The last video to come out was Isolated. So tell me a bit about that one. Um, Isolated was like, the what fourth third or fourth video i did with rich he he met him and i did um stone alone we, we did all the videos but except for king of sin i did king of sin uh with a different guy so yeah we've had some experience working together and then like we just took um guidance from the label in terms of like making this making this video a bit more mature and like i don't know just like not me taking my clothes off running around screaming right like it's an emotional song and stuff like that so it wouldn't have been appropriate anyways, but we just like tried to m take a, a vibe to match the tune, you know, it's a, it's a soul, it's a soulful song, I hope. And yeah, we kind of just had the idea like, of like, basically I had the idea of like Saw, you know, like the Saw horror movies. I just had the idea of like a guy, well, my original idea was like a guy basically like trapped in a room, like chained up, but like, <laughs> you have to like, claw like cut off his limbs or something like crazy intense and we were thinking about that but rich thinks most of my ideas are crazy anyways and then i was thinking about um like the idea of a guy in a house trying to get out but like a, some sort of like evil power just kept like tossing him around the house and shit like exorcist style but anyways we settled on a bit more subtle but like a bit a bit more of an abstract concept and then this old guy's like running around tripping out and then i'm kind of like maybe in the basement so it's yeah, I don't know. I think it added a really cool flair. I think it turned out all right. Yeah, you also uh, released videos for Stoned and Alone and uh, I Don't Want to Grow Up and King of Sin. So how important is the visual side of Damon Gray to you and where does it all come from? Always changing, man. I'm still kind of figuring that out. I'm not like some branding expert, but... Um, well, for I Don't Want to Grow Up, I mean... Um, I always had a vision for that video. Like when I wrote that song, I always, always had a vision for like a bunch of fucking punks, just like headbanging on the street, just like cussing people out basically. And we kind of created that, you know, we I wanted to make it like gritty and mean and, and kind of nasty and like teen rebellion angers type shit. So I had to get some people in the video, but one of the issues like was the people that I had to join the video they weren't like at the start being like mean enough. <laughs> like they were so excited to be in the video and shit. Right. And I was like, guys, like, I know we're, ha like, we're having a good time, but like, fuck the world. Like hail Satan. Like, I need you guys to be mad. And they're like, okay. Like, let's be mad. I'm like, so I was like yelling at them. I was like, get mad. And we finally kind of got that going. So anyways, that's just a behind the scenes on that one. Yeah. And then King of Sin, man, we just tried to make it like, it's a sexual song. So there's obviously that element to it. And then it's like, um, I don't know. I didn't have the idea of the subway thing, but the music director had the idea of like the subway thing with like the throne. And um, just basically the idea of that one was like people morphing into their like sinful, strong nature. So she comes in just like looking like normal with her yellow dress. And then she morphs into this like goth fucking bashing like cars and stuff like that. So yeah, man. And then Stone and Alone was, um, we just tried to make like a rock video, you know, just like, a, just like make a classic kind of rock video. Yeah. How is it for you now uh, that the album is out and you, uh, well, cannot really tour? And I said, it's uh, the debut album. So like, what, what is the, what is well, the Well, luckily I played like 20 shows right before this situation happened. So that was pretty great, man. Like I, I, I have got, I have been out and played these songs and like ripped these. So I feel good about that. Um, but obviously, yeah, like in terms of what's everything now and like releasing an album, not being able to tour. Uh, 
it's easy to mentally go down to negative places right oh i can't do this i can't do that it's like but that's like a victim mentality right and like the victim mentality is just not a mentality that i that i do so i just try to like i know it sounds corny and stuff but i just try to be grateful um for everything you know for the fact that i get to make music for the fact that i you know i'm healthy and all that sort of shit so i don't really like worry about it it is what it is you gotta roll with the punches and at the end of the day you know, your soul is immortal, lives on, yada, yada, yada. So, like, uh, I'm, I'm cool with it, man. I'm, I'm ready to play shows, though, anytime. You know, like, whether people let me or not, if there's an audience, like, I'm ready to go. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, go through the positive then. Like, of course, the future is uncertain, but, like, what kind of plans do you have? <laughs> well, there's been so many positives from this, man. To be honest, like, this whole situation, I think, has pushed a lot of lower frequency people down like in the realms of fear and manipulation and being manipulated by the fucking system. But it's brought a lot of higher frequency people, like people that live from their heart and it's pushed us up is how I see it. And I've been feeling that like frequency increase lately. So that's been a huge positive. And, um, I mean, yeah, the other positives is just like having these conversations, like, spreading the word being able to connect with people in a more genuine manner and also now that like the album's kind of done and stuff i can you know focus on new things and everything like that so there's a lot of positives to it from as well man yeah uh, so what are the new things so like what's the future of damon gray okay yeah the future for damon gray is uh i mean obviously i've got another record in the works um for some time now, for years actually. And I don't necessarily know exactly how I'm going to make it because I need to get to LA, but like, you know, the fucking new world order is here. So I don't necessarily know exactly how that's going to happen. All I know is that it is going to happen. I'm sure of it. And if I have to teleport and just morph into a fucking spirit and get there, like I'm going to do that. It's, it's going to happen. Don't know how. But yeah, I've got a new record uh, working on it. You know, it's like eight, eight songs, concepts kind of there. Try not to procrastinate. And I write them with my mouth. Um, I just literally do it right over here. I just, I just take a mic and I just do the instruments and everything with my voice and I get the concept and then I ship it over to Mike Riley, hopefully again, and then he brings it to life. So yeah, man, that's, that's going down. I'm also writing a book and um Those are the things that I'm really working on right now, man. Yeah, that's interesting. Where does all that inspiration come from? I mean, you said you uh, uh, how you uh, uh, like start writing songs and and that. So how does uh, where, where does all that in- inspiration come from? It comes from like 15 years of listening to extreme music, you know, and, and like the, the seeds that are planted in my mind and subconscious of like energetic little bundles that I want to explore and create and share and I just have those little seeds planted different styles of things in my head so I'm thinking about something and I'll I'll think about a concept and then I'll be like oh that's an interesting concept and then I'll think about is it basically like basically when I'm writing a song in my head it comes from like a lyrical concept a riff or like a vocal melody So if it's, and it depends where it comes from. So if it's like a riff, like, I'll be like, oh, that's a sick ass riff. Nice. I could turn that into a song. And then I'm like, okay, well, what's like a lyric that would go with that or a melody. Right. And then I kind of just dive into it in my head and I think about it and I think about it and then I make sure I get all of the pieces. So that's one way. The other way that happens is I'll think of a sick ass lyric or like a concept. And then I'll be like, okay, that's a cool lyric. What kind of like riff would go with that? And then I'll do it the backwards way. So it just depends what angle I'm coming from, but basically I'll just get an idea, a riff, a concept, or like a vocal melody, and then I'll get the other two pieces and try to morph them. Yeah. Not everybody can tap into that. So what is the book about? Oh, the book is about, um, I don't know, man. I, uh, everyone's gone through some hardships in their life. Right. I've for some reason gone through a good amount and like, it is what it is. Right. But I think that it pushes you to gain knowledge and stuff like that. And the book's basically about, um, 
the process of building inner strength and um, defeating personal insecurities in order to, you know, be your true self, essentially. So I've been in the hippie circles and the, you know, the plant medicine communities and the power of now and all the, you know, do your meditation, do your fucking downward dog with your yoga girls and whatever. I've done a lot of that stuff and it's all very excellent. And then, um, you know, I've done a lot of reading and I've just done a lot in terms of studying the mind and analyzing things. And the gap that I see in all of existence of knowledge is how to actually do it, like how to actually decrease your fear and your insecurity, like how to do it, like the steps. So that's what the big chunk of the book is about that I'm, that I'm working on. It's like, okay, you look at meditation, it's like calm your mind and connect to love. It's like, great, okay. But like the fear didn't just go away, right? Like your insecurities don't just go away when they meditate. Yeah, it's good for you, right? But the book is like how to actually do that. Yeah, I agree. It's like, uh, I think today everybody should have like a spiritual practice because like if people can't handle their feelings, then it's just going to be, you know, hate and hate and hate all the way. So uh, how are you planning to publish this book? Are you going to like uh, publish it online? Like, uh, are you going to read it out loud or what? what's the plan? Well, first I got to finish it. I'm like only like, I don't know, maybe 35% through. I'm like, it's like my life undertaking. So we'll see. I really want to like gear down though and like buckle down. And now that I'm talking about it, like <laughs> I gotta fucking do it, right? So I don't know. I don't really know. But all I know is like, I'm basically going to be putting every ounce of myself into it. And then I'm going to be like, just putting every resource possible that I have to like, to it. You know, I don't know how it's going to go down, but it's like, uh, it's as important to me as everything, as music, so. Okay, let's uh, bring it back to back to music music then. So uh, what kind of sound uh, or what direction is your music gonna take? Um, you know, the next record, it's gonna be more of like a flowing record is my plan. Like it's start, start, I already have a few songs done. So maybe one of them will just be a single because it doesn't quite mesh, but the rest of it, I'm trying to make it like a, more of a, a um, consistent sound and more of a flowing record, right? Cause like the first record, let, let's face it, it, it flows, but it is more like 11 singles kind of thing. So um, I think overall the next record is gonna be a little heavier, a little more technical, and it's gonna have a more consistent, probably like industrial edge throughout, like kind of like, I, I like the taste of blood, like that kind of, um, and you know, I'm just going to be pushing it really probably a bit getting a bit more extreme and I hope just, you know, just a bit like bit better, like in terms of, um, some of my abilities and I don't know, man, it's, it's going to be a, basically a hope, just like a progression and a more polished story and just exploring some different emotions and some different attitudes that I didn't get to on the first record. And also like, I'm going to push into the, like push into darker, heavier, like more hate stuff, like more as well in the second record. And um, yeah, I would say overall, just like a little bit more extreme. Well, you know, in metal, we always uh, have to have a genre and it's, it's not that easy to actually pinpoint a genre for you, but uh, you also mentioned that like the songs also come from the music that you have listened listened to over the years. So uh, what kind of bands would you list as your influences? It's my favorite question ever. It's like my whole life. I've been trying to tell people like, dude, you ever check out like old fucking, well, you, you're, oh, you're in where? You're in, well, you're in Germany or Finland or something? Where are you at again? Uh, at the moment, I'm in Germany. Oh, you're in Germany. So you, you know this stuff, dude. I, I mean, I've always been into like, um, like if you think about bands that maybe some people think I sound like, like I'm not usually into them. You know what I mean? Like I'm into like extreme, uh, I'm into death. I mean, I'm into death metal, death core, probably my favorite. I got my Thy Artist fucking murder tank top here. Um, I really got into Black Tongue. I really got into Thy Artist murder. I'm really into despised icon. I'm really into suffocation. 
bands like that. But then I'm also like really into the Beatles, like really into the Beatles. And I'm really, really into Elvis Presley. Um, I'm also into like some new age hippie stuff like Enya and I, I like a, a girl named Isla Nario who sings about like the plants and like the roots and the stars and stuff like that. Um, I'm really into uh, Lil Peep. I love Lil Peep. I'm really into Big L, 90s original gangster Big L, like Devil's Son Big L. And um, I'm really into Elliot Smith, like dark, suicidal, pop, sad, heart-wrenching shit. And I'm also really, really into 90s dance music. So I'm all over the place, man. Yeah, that's a lot. Do you, is this like, uh, have your music taste like uh, changed a lot of time? Like you, you get into something and then you get into the next stuff? Or, or how do you uh, consume music, if you will? Very interesting question, man. Um, honestly, for me, like, no, like those are my pockets. Like I've always loved those pockets. And what I do is I just dive into one for a while and then I like get a good fill of it. And then I'll come out and I like dive into another one, like get a good fill of it, like come out, dive in, come out. Like I'll go on like a little peep binge for like, you know, two, three weeks. It'll just be fucking peep, 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 peep. And then I'll go into like a black tongue binge and I'll just like listen to some brutal fucking death core for like a week straight. I'm like sick. And then I'll switch it up. And then I'm in a 90s dance mood, like nonstop, you know, so I just kind of like go into the different buckets and I just rotate them. I don't need like I just I know what I like and I just kind of stick with those buckets. It's like it's like horror movies. Like, yeah, I could always watch a new horror movie and that's great. But I also just like rewatching horror movies that I love. Yeah, it seems like uh, like the message of the upcoming uh, or in the works book is like super positive and then uh, the next album is gonna be uh, uh, more about the hate and you also mentioned uh, that you like the hippie stuff and also the metal stuff so how, how do these two like worlds come together in you i don't know man i don't know it's a very strange mind that i live in sometimes but all i know is that you can experience love and hate and sadness and all all the spectrum of emotions you can experience them from a place of love and i think that's what i don't know what i try to convey or what i think some people just don't understand or it's a little different you know like you can listen to hateful music like i've been listening to hateful angry music since i was 10 years old and i do it i don't do it because i'm mad and i hate people I, it makes me happy you know what i mean it's just i'm doing it from a place of happiness most people are like how do you invite a work But I don't know how to explain it exactly. Um, but yeah, man, it all comes from a good place, dude. And I think that all emotions have value. All emotions should be respected. And I think that experiencing the full gambit of emotions is healthy as a human being. I don't even know if that was your question, but I think I answered something. <laughs> 